Shalom to my friends. Baruch Atra Adonai. Blessed be the Lord our God. Today well, there was a small thought in my mind uh, about this Easter approaching us. There's a uh, another holiday coming up that uh, we who are uh, believers, Christians, don't probably give much thought to, uh, although I think it's significant, but there's another very important holiday coming up this week that it, if you weren't brought up in a uh, Orthodox Jewish home, you probably don't realize that this week is also Passover week. So uh, part of the Passover week is the Sedar, or the uh, what they would consider a formal dinner. And it's tied into uh, the Exodus uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, Egypt. And uh, why should we know about this uh, Passover and uh, meal? Uh, why is it significant to us as Christians? And I think we ought to uh, have a little idea of that and keep it in mind. It's significant for this Easter season in particular. Uh, the Bible is a Jewish book written by Jewish men for the most part. Uh, it's about Jewish history, it's about a Jewish nation, and it's about a Jewish Messiah by another, here's another Hebrew word, Yahshua HaMashiach, which means Yash, Yahshua is, uh, is, means Jesus, it means Savior, HaMashiach is the Anointed One. Jesus, who is the anointed one, Yahshua HaMashiach. So, uh, one of the little tricky little sayings that's uh, worthwhile to remember uh, is this, and that the new is in the old, contained, and the old, meaning the Old Testament, is in the new, explained. The new is in the old concealed, and the old is in the new revealed. So, for you to understand your Bible from cover to cover, you have to get a, a little bit of a handle on the historicity, the Jewish people, and uh, uh, how the various things fit into the scheme of God's plans. Uh, if you were to investigate the Passover, one of the things that you would start to realize that the things that are in this Passover meal are all pointing towards Jesus, the Messiah. Uh, if you had a, 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 a Passover uh, dinner plate, there would be on there bitter things and sweet things. And of course, this is a, a, is a, uh, a picture of the embitterment of being in slavery in Egypt and the sweetness of being taken out of the bondage delivered by God himself uh, out of out of slavery. Well, much the same as we uh, look at that, we've been delivered out of the bondage of sin and taken out of deliverance by Yahshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a, it's a picture of the, uh, the affliction, affliction and the joy, the slavery, and the deliverance. Now, Christ is in the Passover, and we can see that un unraveled uh, in the New Testament in several places and throughout the New Testament. But the passage of Scripture that I was looking at in particular today uh, is found in uh, Luke chapter number 22. Chapter number 22, and I'm going to start reading a little portion of this, and you'll you'll uh, see what I'm talking about. And you can investigate this later for yourself. In uh, chapter 22, uh, we're talking about uh, Jesus having the, the Passover. So he recognized it, and uh, he was teaching from it, 
showing an example, and we'll see to some point today in this brief little talk we're having, uh, uh, some of the significance of, of Jesus and this Passover. Uh, verse number 7 says, Then came the day of unleavened bread. Well, that's the matzah. Uh, the, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room, furnished there, uh, 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 there make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. So uh, there was already provisions made. Uh, the, 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 uh, there's no surprises with God. He has plans, he has purposes, and they unfold perfectly. Uh, the crucifixion, crucifixion of Christ was no surprise to God. He did uh, start scratching his head and wondering what happened. Jesus came, you know, and no, that was an all planned program for the redemption ever since Genesis 3.15 when the promise of a Redeemer was given. This is just God's plans and purposes being opened up, revealed, and uh, 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 being executed in an absolute perfect way according to his perfect will. It further says here, And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him, and he said unto them, With uh, desire I have desired, desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I, I, I never, it ceases to amaze me how many times Jesus said he was going up to Jerusalem, he was going to be uh, killed, he was going to be and die, uh, and after three days he was going to be, he repeated this several times throughout the, the Gospels, and yet they didn't get it. Uh, sometimes God speaks to you and me through the scriptures and we just, we don't get it, you know. Uh, why don't we get it? I could be any number of different reasons. Um, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself, John 7, 17 says so. Uh, maybe it could just be a matter of what God has already showed you. you haven't exercised it yet. So why should God give you any more than, than that? But that's a different thing altogether, and we can talk about that at another time. Uh, and then he says, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, this and divide it among yourselves, for I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave uh, thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. This do we remembrance me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which uh, is shed for you. Uh, so we see that he's taking these various uh, parts of the uh, Sedar, the, the presentation of the dinner, the Passover meal, and he's identifying them with himself. Now, we don't have time, but you can certainly do an investigation. All you have to do is, you just got to Google it, you know, and, and you can find all the uh, different uh, uh, significance things that are in this Passover meal uh, that are pointing to Jesus, pointing to Jesus. Uh, probably uh, one of the most significant things to me is uh, uh, the mazah. And it's uh, three uh, pieces of matzah that are put together, and, and but wait, wait, the middle one is broken deliberately. And, uh, you know, th this is a very significant thing. Why are there three? Why aren't there six? Why aren't there two? Why aren't there one? Well, can I suggest to you? Uh, they not knowing it even when they initial, uh, initially were taught to do this by God's instructions uh, they didn't realize this is significant to me of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost uh, 
the son, the middle piece, the one that's broken, he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. So we could see that this Isaiah prophecy is unrolled here and taking place also in this structure as his uh, climactic end is coming here uh, and the cross is calling to him and he's on the way uh, uh, to that cross all these things uh, that were uh, prophesied of the Messiah, uh, of the suffering Savior, and the picture uh, of the, 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 the Passover. Back over in Exodus is where we, we have the uh, uh, picture and uh, description uh, of the Passover, Exodus chapter 12. And uh, God says that he's ab about to bring the final plague down, and that is the that he's going to bring judgment down by the firstborn of every family is going to perish in Egypt. But there is a, a little uh, little thing that, that, uh, that's added to that is that if there's blood on the doorposts of your house, if you sacrifice the lamb and if you put that blood on that blood post, he says in verse 13, Exodus 12, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And isn't that interesting? Because John the Baptist said at the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ, he pointed his bony finger out and saw Jesus coming and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Here in uh, Exodus uh, number 12, I know it's here somewhere still in my Bible. <laughs> Exodus uh, number 12, it says that uh, in verse uh, 11, and thou shalt eat it, speaking of this, this meal, thou shalt eat it with your loins, gird your shoes on your feet and, and your staff, uh, uh, shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land in Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. Uh, and it goes on, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And it goes on further and says that, uh, that, uh, uh, this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall, shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. And so when Christ was having uh, uh, this Passover meal, he was identifying himself as the bread. Uh, John 6.35, he said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And so uh, th th this is opening up uh, of, uh, of a way to him, uh, a way to God, is the execution uh, of the lamb and Christ being that sacrificial lamb for us. Now, later on, as uh, Paul uh, ha had written in uh, Corinthians, uh, uh, he had said that, uh, uh, that Christ is our Passover. Uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And then later on he writes uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 24 and 25, he's making a, uh, a comment about this passage that Jesus was speaking of. of and he says, And when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So we see that uh, this whole act is a picture. The Passover is very important to us as Christians. It's just that the difference between us and the, the uh, Jewish Orthodox is that they're still looking for their Messiah to come. Ours has already come. And he's going to return again. So when we have the Lord's Supper, we are, are to uh, uh, look back 
as it were, at what Christ has done for us. He bare our iniquities, surely hath borne our sorrows and our griefs. Yet he was stricken and afflicted of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's straight out of Isaiah chapter number 53. Some have called the uh, 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 book the, of Isaiah the fifth gospel because it plainly and clearly lays out the plan of God and the plan uh, of the suffering Savior. So we are to look back at the crucifixion, look inward to, the, to where we stand with God, and what needs to be remedied and to uh, make the changes that are needed. Look back at the suffering. Look inward to what we need to do to have the proper uh, fellowship with Christ. And then it also, this do ye as often as in remembrance of me. And then to look forward to his coming. So look back, look in, look forward. All these things tied up and uh, this uh, Passover, and uh, I, I just want to say that there's going to be another great meal, and, and Jesus made an allusion to this back here in Luke uh, uh, 22, uh, and uh, it carries out all the way to the end of the book, the book uh, of Revelation. Uh, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9, it says, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19.9. So there'll be that, up, that meal, and we'll be sitting down with Jesus, and it'll be a glorious thing. And we will, like they say, at every Seder, at every meal, Baruch Adonai, blessed be the Lord our God. Well, just a little note for you today. God bless you. Remember, he is risen. Truly he has risen.